I just heard Artie on. Well, the BMW was was fun. All right, so first question. I can't remember this roundabout. The ah, yeah, let's go. Okay. Burn out. Spin the days, Bill. Well, the BMW was was fun, loud, and loud because engine noise, and loud because of uh, wind noise. So much like last year when I rode in that Mercedes, and I sat in the back, and then we went past the truck, and the wind noise went up exponentially. Don't run me over! No. <laughs> I will sue you, and I will own you! No. <laughs> but anyway, so Aaron is currently in the Palisade. I have yet to see the Telluride. Uh, in fact, we saw one on the way here, although it wasn't a white one, like the one that's here. But yeah, so let's see, we're in somewhere in the mountains where there's probably Sasquatch and a few wolves and no internet. So that's that's very nice. And I need sh I did need shades. I was very right to bring shades because that would have been bad. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, considering how my how my plans have not gone to plan, uh, I'll just see you in whatever I get in next. Yeah, I just want to make a point, and that's why I'm doing this short video. I just heard Artie on. So I was saying Artie on. Artie. Yeah, Artie on. Artie on, whatever, whatever Ryan was saying, and Artie on. So it seems like there is very much no correct way to say it. So, fun fact, chipmunks are quite chipmunks are quite bold. I know this because one tried to mug me by jumping up my leg. I was not best pleased with that. What, what do you want to say? Chipmunks, dangerous. V very. I feel like something, they raided something from my bag, like raccoons. Hopefully they didn't. So, current sit rep, uh, I didn't get any footage of that. Excuse me, of that challenger, unfortunately, because I was motion sick. I was quite, I was quite poorly to put it frankly so yeah I no I was not I was not recording that one but then again I've um, I think I maybe not recorded last time but point being uh, that's not that car is not specifically why I'm here or why I have a list of questions I want to ask 
the representatives of specific vehicles. So I'm okay with that one. Uh, and to be honest, it was just a really actually leisurely cruise throughout the throughout the drive to where we are right now, and it's Manitou Manitou Park. I think I'm saying that correctly. So in terms of raw footage, the BMW stuff is more exciting. So yeah, there you go. Um, and we're departing for the hotel now. I think it's two-ish o'clock. My wristwatch is in army time, which means it's completely and utterly useless. So that's that's sad and quite unfortunate. So yeah, not much I can do. Not much I can do about it right now because there is absolutely no internet. And by absolutely no internet, I mean I checked to see if there was any Wi-Fi out here to see if we were actually 100% in the sticks. And as it turns out, yes, we are one. No, I'm shooting me. We are 100% in the sticks. There is not one single Wi-Fi signal out here at all. It just kept searching and searching and searching. Now, granted, my phone doesn't have a SIM card, but normally it can pick up on useless Wi-Fi signals because they have passwords, but not this time, not this time. So anyway, I'm uh, gonna jump in something next and I will see you all probably at the hotel and they have a bunch of local drive routes there. So I'll be jumping in cars then as well. Let's, let's shift that way and then Sid rep everyone, so so I didn't get any footage of the challenger unless I already told you about that. Oh yeah, I did because it was lunchtime. Okay, and I also told you that I got mugged by a squirrel. Not fun. Um, but we are here at the hotel and I just rode in the high end Palisade. And I didn't get any footage of that either, unfortunately. Uh, but what was it like? I will tell you. Quiet, smooth, the drive, the the gear selection is kind of dumb actually it's it's a drive button a neutral button and a park button it's it's really weird it's really really and then reverse reverse is also a button but it's all it's all very very weird i personally think they could have done it better but whatever um yes yeah, so that's that was less good but it actually looks okay in the flesh i thought i wasn't really gonna like it but i actually do quite like it the interior is nice it's luxurious it's most expensive or the one we were driving was only 40,000. So, you know, certainly expensive, but for how luxurious it was, it actually was pretty good. It wasn't that bad. Um, like I said, quiet, smooth, the interior was luxurious, the outside looks good, the engine was smooth and had sufficient power. Nothing too much and nothing too little. And to be honest, I don't think there really is too much power when it comes to most SUVs. Most SUVs could do with at least 360, but whatever. So yeah, actually it was really, really, really nice. I quite liked it. And it had ventilated seats, which was good because I was, I, I, I've been baking the entire day. So that was a godsend to put it, I think the most accurately, it really was a godsend. But anyway, so now we're here at the resort, which is just amazing. It, the views, the pool, <laughs> and actually yeah, they have a hot tub, which I didn't see a photo of, but whatever. Can't, you, you know, you can't have it all, but yeah, so they have a hot tub that I'm not going to be going in. I'm just going to be going straight for the pool after after 7 o'clock. So, yeah, because they have a happy hour, but I'm underage, so I'm not drinking. So I get to just jump straight in the pool, so that's nice. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to get in a few more cars. Things are starting to get a little bit louder. But yeah, so I've ridden in the BM, a BMW M850i convertible, a Dodge Challenger Scat Pack wide body, a Hyundai Palisade, a Jeep Renegade. And let, let me think. A VW Arteon. So and then, like I said, I've been saying it wrong this whole time, apparently. But yeah, so that's that's currently. Sorry, I was trying to switch fingers. So that's currently the events that have happened and what's going on right now. Everyone's just checking in. Me and my dad are about to check in as well. And then because it's about two-ish, and from two thirty, from two thirty to four o'clock, they have local drive routes. So I will also be partaking in that not driving. I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be riding with people who are going to be taking the local drive routes. And I haven't gotten in the I haven't gotten in the Jeep Gladiator yet, and I want to get in that. So we will indeed be making a sort of beeline for the Gladiator and the Mazda 3 because I want to be in that because I haven't been in it yet. So yeah, those are the events. I don't know where the cars are. I would get more photos, but I don't know where they are. So anyway, I will see you all in a short while. 
Alrighty everyone, I did finally manage to get into the Gladiator after basically just missing it. <laughs> but I am here with Kelly. She's with Mopar, not actually with Jeep. So I'm going to try and keep my questions a little bit more on the Mopar side. Alright, so first question. I saw on a website that I'm on that the Jeep Gladiator is now the most highly customized Jeep there is. Is that... Is that true oh, yes. already? That is correct already. So, um, for a few reasons, right? When we set out the plan for accessories for the Gladiator, we really targeted a number of pillars. We looked at the off road stuff, the truck stuff, um, lifestyle things, yeah. uh, racks and whatnot, and aesthetic changes that people can make. So, between all of those pillars, which is more than we have on any other uh, one single vehicle. Um, even this close to launch, it's already um, exceeded other nameplates in terms of dollars per unit spent. So. Wow. Well, that just proves if it's if it's a Jeep Wrangler or a Gladiator, it's a Jeep, so it's going to get customized. Uh -huh. So this is less of a Mopar question, but a little while ago it was revealed that the Cherokee was going to get a Sandhawk version. Well, I don't even know how far from now, but is the Gladiator going to receive the same treatment? Oh, I can't comment on that. Uh, okay. Future, <laughs> future product. product <laughs> <laughs> so, when Mopar designs parts for a vehicle, do they design them while that vehicle's in development, or is it after it gets revealed and then the Mopar team gets to work on making parts for it? Oh, uh, it's definitely the former. So we ultimately, we are the OEM, right? We work with all of our brands. And uh, basically, even before the vehicle is, is uh, approved, we're working with the design office, we're working with the platform engineering teams to ensure that the parts and accessories that we want to offer, uh, the appropriate provisions are in place in the vehicle, etc. So that's the great benefit of, of Mopar parts and accessories is they're actually designed for the vehicle, they're tested and validated. Uh, you know, we send our lift kits on hot trips, validation trips, etc. Um, and the third parties, the aftermarket, can't even come close to that, right? Uh, weather mats, for example, commonly what happens is when a Gladiator is available, they'll buy a vehicle, they'll scan it, and they will create mats that are perfect for that one vehicle, right? Rather than having the map data and the you know geometric um, yeah. tolerance. I do not remember this roundabout nope. on the way in. Here's a behind the scenes of what happens <laughs> during a test drive. Some some things go not to plan, to put it that way. Although I will say this, that uh, that renegade kept going with Laura in it, so I don't I don't think many people are doing are strictly doing the Yeah, run, but, everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. Helps when you know the area, but I do not. <laughs> so that's interesting. So what happens when some of our parts don't actually make it to production? Because I remember the Dodge Dart had a lot of SEMA concepts with a lot of Mopar parts each year and not not very many of them made it to Which vehicle? Available. The Dodge Dart. Oh. By the way, viewers, if you're wondering what that was, that was my phone. Was my phone still, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, when we show vehicles at certain events, sometimes it is uh, Mopar production parts, and sometimes they're Mopar conceptual parts. Okay. And what we do sometimes with these Mopar conceptual parts is um, sometimes they're just, you know, we have no intention of bringing them to market. Sometimes it's something that we're thinking about, and we want to get some feedback on um you know what our customers think about them so uh, at the end of the day right when we bring something to market it needs to be commercially viable we need to be offer it, able to offer it at a price that's um, competitive with yeah. what's available in the aftermarket and if something doesn't make sense um, then we either don't pursue it or, or we drop it from the uh, the Mopar portfolio As Jeep says, take the path on travel. <laughs> that route. Route that. recalculation. Oh, In 400 feet, 
Turn right that onto looks Second more Street. Yeah. Looks more Jeep like. <laughs> Anyway, so why did you guys decide to bring the low price 1500? I mean, I thought that would be sort of a show only vehicle. Oh, no, um, absolutely not show only vehicle, and that's sort of the point of bringing it out um, here. That vehicle is actually going to be in the press, uh, the PR fleet really? now, but um, it's just being able to show people and getting additional exposure to the fact that that's something that can easily be done. It's not a show vehicle, Turn it's not a special right. pristine, don't road. use it. Right. It's a take your production car and using Mopar accessories and performance parts. That can be uh, the result. Uh, take the next left, then All right, end we of made the road. It. Turn right. You are approaching your destination. I remember seeing images of that when it was at SEMA. It looked, it looked really, it looks really cool. The blue vehicle. So yeah. the, the blue vehicle um, looks very similar to the Mopar Eyes heavy duty mm -hmm. truck that we had at Chicago mm -hmm. this past year. Um, but prior to that, the only other Mopar Eyes 1500 we had was um, uh, I think it was a red one that we showed at uh, oh, Detroit yeah. last year. Yeah, because it had the the dual ram. I can't remember what it's called, but basically they put, sur I think they put surfboards or something on top. Yes, I think you're right. I think they had kayaks. Yes. Big, massive white ones. Yeah. Did you have any more questions? Uh, no. Thanks again, Kim. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I have just come back from riding in the Gladiator and that one is nice. It's nice. It's smooth. It's not quiet. If you have everything absolutely open, it is very much not quiet. It's actually quite loud. So yeah, it can't, one can't quite say the Gladiator is quiet. However, one can very much say that it is nice on the inside. The, ah, yeah, let's go. Okay. Burn out. It's been the days, Bill. <laughs> that's, that's what you have line lock for. Hey, I still gotta use these tires. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back onto the point at hand. So, Gladiator was nice. It's not actually quiet if you have everything open, but most of the time it's it's nice. And not too loud. You know, it's a Jeep. You, you're, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be the Palisade, okay? If you have everything up though, for a Jeep, it's really really quite nice. The ride, I liked it. I was comfortable. The seats were comfortable. The engine. I think it could use a little bit more power. Not that we really got into it all that much, but oh well. Still nice, still got us mer uh, merged onto the highway without too much trouble. So, yeah, overall, I quite like it. I can see why it's popular.